Hey guys, this is another video in the series of Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. You will find the playlist in the description box, which has all the other videos related to MDE. Today we will discuss what is device discovery. So if you go to the Defender portal, that is security.microsoft.com and then scroll down completely to the settings tab, you will find this device discovery tab. Before it was under endpoints, now they have made a different section for it. So click on device discovery. This device discovery capability is provided by MDE to help you identify unmanaged devices connected to your corporate network. This doesn't need any extra appliances or um, pro process changes. So what happens? Device discovery will use onboarded endpoints. So there are many endpoints that you have with MDE. These devices will discover the other unmanaged devices for you. So these onboarded endpoints in your network will collect, probe or scan your network to discover unmanaged devices. So it's not just like laptops and servers that identifies, it also identifies mobile devices, network devices like routers, switches, firewalls, IoT devices like printers and cameras. So once you identify these unmanaged devices, you can onboard them to uh, MDE, not the network devices, of course but you can get more information on those devices, like what is installed on them, what are the vulnerabilities, what are the CVE numbers attached to those like routers or switches. So in device discovery, if you see there are two modes, one is the basic one, the other one is the standard discovery. Basic one is the passive way of collecting events in your network and they extract device information from them passively. Here there is no network traffic initiated and it uses sense ndr.exe binary to collect passive network data. So endpoints extract data here from all network traffic seen by an, an uh, onboarded device, okay? But this gives you limited visibility of unmanaged endpoints in your network. It doesn't give you all the details. But the standard discovery, the other one, which is the recommended uh, discovery mode, gives you more information. This actively finds device devices in your network and gives more data about them like maybe host name, OS version which will not be available in the basic scanning. So some of the protocols that are used for probing and active probing that are standard discovery are ARP, FTP, HTTP, HTTPS, ICMP, RDP, SMTP, SNMP, SHH, uh, Telnet, and so many others, I will link them in the description box. Here it is also giving me an option to enable log4j2 detection. So it will detect devices with applications using the vulnerability log4j2 and it is done through unauthenticated probing. So onboarded devices running on Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows Server 2019 or Windows, uh, Windows Server 2022 are used for performing this discovery okay and then it also gives you an option to select which devices to use for standard discovery do you want to use all the devices or do you want to use only a a few of them. If you select all devices, which is the recommended one, then it will enable uh, standard discovery for all the supported devices. Like I mentioned, Windows 10, 11, uh, Windows Server 2019, Windows, House, uh, Windows Server 2022. Or you can select tags, which will enable device discovery on only these devices or device groups based on selected tags. Only these devices will perform the standard discovery. In basic, it is all the devices doing it in standard you have your choice and then you can hit save to save your changes so when you turn on active probing that is standard discovery devices will be actively probed when there are any changes in device characteristics just to make sure that the existing information is up to date so microsoft says typically devices are probed no more than once in a three week period and also active probing that is standard discovery can generate up to 50 KB of traffic between the onboarded device and the probe device that is for every probing attempt. So if you don't want both of these basic or standard discovery you can just go to 
again back to the menu go to settings go to endpoints go to advanced features the first option let me minimize this so you see this if you scroll down in advanced features you see device discovery you can disable this as well if you don't want to do it now let's go back to device discovery so again you're going back to settings under settings device discovery next let's go to exclusions in exclusions like you can see it says that the ips that you add here or the subnets will be excluded from proactively from being proactively discovered so you can add uh, exclusions here and say the uh, subnet or IP address usually maybe honey pods honey nuts you can add it here and give a description so that the other admins understand what you're doing let me close this and then once device discovery is switched on you can go to monitor networks to see what is happening here this will give you the list of up to 50 networks that are identified as corporate networks so in my network there is only uh, one network name and onboarded devices two of these are here but let me show you an example where there are many networks that are identified so if you see this here there are many networks that have been identified you may ask what happens you know if you're working from home will the home devices be discovered as well or when you go to like you know working from cafeteria Will public access point be discovered uh, as a network here? That is very unlikely because the discovery engine that is used for device discovery knows how to distinguish between network events that are received in the uh, corporate network versus outside of the corporate network. So it gets to know that, you know, this network is private and this is corporate. For example, if most of the devices in the organization report that they are connected to the same network name, with the same default gateway and DHCP server address, it can be concluded that this network is likely a corporate network. That's how the discovery engine gets to know. Even if it has identified something by uh, mistake as corporate, you can click on this and choose ignore this network from monitoring it will give you a confirmation page by choosing to not monitor this network devices will not be discovered okay and i click confirm the changes are applied if there is a network uh, that you want to monitor and it is ignored you can also choose monitor this uh, network just click on these three dots and choose what you want to do and then there is something called as authenticated scans this is for identifying network devices so what is the concept behind this so you use a designated microsoft defender for endpoint de uh, device to perform periodic authenticated scans of pre-configured network devices so you use one mde device in each network segment to perform periodic scans to identify network devices so you can identify switches routers firewalls vpn gateways and wlan controllers so these network devices are not managed as standard endpoints like laptops or servers because MDE doesn't have a sensor built into the network devices themselves. So these types of devices will require an agentless approach where a remote scan obtains the necessary information from the devices. So you, here you have two types of devices. One is a scanning device and one is a network device. Scanning device is the device that's already onboarded to MDE that you use to scan the network devices. Network devices are the devices that you plan to scan and onboard. There are a few steps before you start this authenticated scanning. So first you'll have to decide what onboarded devices or device that has a network connection. It has to have this network connection to the management port, right? For the network devices you plan on scanning. So that needs to be done first. Then the SNMP traffic between the Defender for Endpoint scanning device where you have 
have the scanner installed and the targeted network devices must be allowed. Targeted network devices may be like, you know, like I said, firewall routers should be allowed. You also need to decide which network devices are assessed for vulnerabilities. And then you need to make sure SNMP read-only is enabled on all configured network devices. This is to allow the defender for endpoint scanning device to query the configured network devices. So you only need SNMP read only, SNMP write is not required. And then you need the IP addresses of the network devices to be scanned or the subnets. Then you need SNMP credentials of the network devices. And then for the scanner to be authenticated and work properly, you need to add the following domains or URL. I will link all of them in the description box. Once all of that is done, you can download the scanner from here. Click on download scanner and it will start downloading it. Once this is downloaded, you can get this on the device that you want to act as a scanner and install it. You just have to run this, that's all. Run this as uh, an administrator. It might even ask you to provide your credentials. Once that is done, you can go to authenticated scans, add new scan to create authenticated scan definition. This is a new network device authenticated scan that you are setting up. First, it is asking you to select the authenticated scan type. You can select the network device authenticated scan. This runs scans on unmanaged network devices. You also have Windows authenticated scan. You don't need this. You select network device authenticated scan and then click on next. Next, let me provide a test network scan MDE as a name. Then you have to select the scanning device. Which scanning device that you have installed this uh, scanner on will do that. So you need to select that and then you provide what targets will it scan, IP addresses or subnets. So there is an option even to import a, an Excel sheet with all the details. And it also tells you when do you want to scan it, hourly, daily, every four hours, 12 hours. And then there is a authentication method you can choose from these following I'm choosing community string and give uh, the string value here fill SNMP community string value here okay you can also use Azure key vault for providing credentials if you manage your credentials in Azure key vault then you can enter the Azure key vault URL and Azure key vault secret name to be accessed by the scanning device so if you click on this it will give you Azure Key Vault URL and Azure Key Vault secret name. So this is how you set up a new scan in authenticated scans. Let me cancel this. Once all this is done, if you go to assets under the devices, it takes a minute to load. So you can filter here, scroll down. You can go here and select from onboarding status that can be onboarded. It is not onboarded, but these devices can be on onboarded. You can select that filter and then say apply. Then you will get the list. I don't have a lot of devices, so I'm not getting the list. Let me show you an example. So if you look at this, see there are so many devices and you can select that can be onboarded. Once you get that list, you can click on that device. See, this is an unmanaged device, which can be, if you see this onboarding status, it says this can be onboarded. Okay, and if you go to security recommendations of that device, you can also see onboard devices to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. You can click on that and then you will get the recommendation what needs to be done and you can onboard this device. You can also do this from another place. So in the main menu, if you scroll down to vulnerability management and then go to recommendations and search for onboard devices, you should get this option. You will get onboard devices to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and then you see it has um, an overview of it, remediation options and exposed devices. It says in this example that 21 devices are uh, not managed that can be onboarded and you can apply the recommendation to all of these. So if you click on exposed devices, it will give you the list of devices that they are there and then you can request for remediation.
So this request remediation tab is to connect the security team with the IT administrators. Like for example, onboarding this device might not be your job, but identifying and giving that information to the IT admins is your job. That is the security admins job. So you can create a request from here, which will reflect in, in tune for the IT administrators. I will do a separate video on this in depth for right now understand that request remediation is a link between the security team and the IT admin team and these tickets will be created in Intune. So that's it for today guys. Like always let me know in the comment section what other topics you want to know or what other tools that you want me to make videos on. I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about device discovery in MDE. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked our video don't forget to share, like and subscribe. I will see you again soon. Bye bye.